Tim Collins with Company Today. I'm now with Paul Busman. Week four, legislative session in Montgomery. Senator, I didn't see a whole heck of a lot happening in the Senate this week. What, what, what do you have that's going on? We didn't have a whole lot going on in the Senate this week. We had sunset. Uh, all the sunset boards and commissions had to be reviewed this week. Uh, usually that is a delay tactic by the opposition. Uh, they chose not to delay. Uh, so we got out of there pretty quick this week. Uh, it was very short. Uh, the leadership had only had that on the schedule. Uh, and so we got done early Tuesday and we got done early Thursday. And so we really didn't do a whole lot of, of important business, but it was business that had to be taken care of. Well, the House, those guys were just running around like ants. They were busy as could be. Yeah, they, they've got a lot going on down there. Uh, and we are headed in that direction. Uh, it just depends on when, when we're, uh, the leadership decides to start moving some of these very controversial issues. And when they do, then, then we'll get very busy. Well, there's lots of business and there's only a short period of time. Why would somebody delay the important business of the people? I don't get it. I, I, don't, I don't know why we chose to just do the sunset this time. Uh, it may have been that in the last three years, it's taken us probably 24 hours to get those bills out. Uh, maybe they were expecting some problems or weren't sure we were, were not going to have some problems. Uh, but everything went very smoothly. Uh, but what that does, that, that compresses the time available for us to make some of these very difficult decisions that we're going to have to make on prisons, on budgets, uh, on many different things like that. So it'll get interesting. Well, don't you need ample time as a senator to research, review? You, if somebody just brings this to you and expects you to do it in one afternoon, uh, you, you can't make a good decision like that, can you? Well, that's the reason I try to get everything in advance. And, and, and I'm looking at the prison bill right now and have been looking at the prison bill for the last two or three weeks. Uh, I'm looking at the education budget real hard right now. That is a, that is a very critical uh, uh, bill that's going to be passed that has a tremendous effect on my district. Uh, and so we're looking at that. We're talking to our fellow colleagues. I'm talking to the chairman. Uh, there's things that we've got to have changed, uh, and, and I'm not sure they're going to be willing to make those changes. So it, it's going to get very interesting when that happens. Well, since we don't have a whole heck of a lot to talk about, because not a lot occurred this week, I'm going to kind of break my normal rank and routine here and point out that what I see is the Democratic Party in this state is in shambles. Except in a few strongholds, you know, that, that can't get more than 10% of the vote. The Republicans, who are in power to their credit, they're equally in shambles from the, the situation at the Supreme Court, the governor's office, recently with the Senate. And, and I've noticed this day after day, week after week, year after year. It's just like they're shuffling dominoes down there, Senator. I mean, how do we actually make a substantial fix to what are some major obvious problems? Well, you've hit on a lot of the, the tremendous concerns that I have. Uh, and one of those concerns, and I've said it more than once, it's, it's sometimes in Montgomery it looks like we've just changed jerseys. Uh, you know, we, we do the same thing the same way the Democrats did a couple years ago uh, with the same results. There are none. Uh, and so we have got to figure out a way uh, to motivate and to activate uh, the, the party to do what they are supposed to do. You know, the Republican Party sends us requests to close primaries, to do many different things that they think will be beneficial, and, and we don't ever take action on them. Uh, which is, to me, would be a tremendous concern if I was one of the executive uh, uh, executive people in the in the Republican Party. Uh, you know, we are a super majority in in, in Montgomery, uh, and and we don't even pass some of the important bills that the Republican Party asks us to pass. So, uh, it's very concerning to me. Uh, I have some real concerns about where we're going, uh, and I have some real concerns about uh, who's going to go with me when I decide to go down that road, and and it is coming. Uh, I think we're going to have to make a, a substantial stand in the Senate, uh, and when we do that, we're going to we're going to stir up some feathers, and we're going to make some people very angry, uh, and we're going to be accused of things that that may not necessarily be accurate. So I, I I say that in in more in advance notice that when you start hearing these things about what I'm trying to do, just understand that I'm trying to change, like I told you that we were going to try to change. Well, Senator, I mean the. the State government is an entity, but that entity is made up of human beings. And the ones in, in power that make these laws are not, are human beings. They're elected. And it seems like to me there's a great deal of fear in elective officials. And they're always worried about whether they're going to get elected or not. That seems reasonable on one level, but that's not why we voted for you to go into office. Uh, that is a horrible reason uh, to vote on anything. Uh, is what it's going to do to your political career. And, and and I have never voted that way, and I will never vote that way. 
You know, if I can't explain to you why I, why I voted a certain way uh, to help you understand the benefits or the, or the lack of benefits of that bill, uh, you know, I shouldn't be there in the first place. Uh, but the problem I have is, is when, when people look at a bill or look at what's the right thing to do and have to decide whether it's politically expedient for them to do that or not, uh, I, I don't have a lot of patience for that. And, and, you know, I'm down there for one reason. I'm around there to do the right thing. I'm down there to do what the people of my district sent me to down there to do. And that's what I intend to do. And, and if I get reelected, fine. If I don't, that's fine too. But until, as long as I've got Senator Bussman on, on the, on district four, I'm going to do what's right for the people of my district. And, and there will be consequences for that. Well, let's use a real world example to make it more folks grasp it. We've got an education budget that, will have, like you said a moment ago, was going to have to be delved into. Uh, a tremendous amount of, of that budget goes to higher education, University of Alabama, Auburn, Troy, so on and so forth, leaving districts like yours where we don't have a major university scrambling for little funds to give to county, city schools, Wallace, so forth. Mm -hmm. How do you... How do you get your fair share? Well, at this point, we've we've made that very clear to leadership. We've made it very clear to the chairman that, that my district is not being treated fairly simply because we don't have a university in our district. Uh, you know, the universities get tremendous amounts of dollars for buildings and, and those type things. We don't get that in my district. And so somewhere along the way, the 150,000 people that I represent have to be fairly treated. Uh, and this session will probably be the session that it occurs that that we're going to make a stand that says we need to be treated as fairly as everybody else. Uh, and, and I intend to do that. And, and when that happens, I'm sure it will be a, uh, a newsworthy event. Senator, it sounds like you're uh, fired up and getting ready for, for potentially a couple of battles. I, I'm, I am uh, very optimistic that we can get things done. Uh, I'm very disappointed in the, in the position we're in at this point. Uh, but I will not back off and, and tell my constituents that, that they are being treated unfairly and me sit around and not do anything about it. So we're going to do something about it. And, and like I said, I, I, uh, I hope people understand when they hear things that, that all this stuff may not be accurate. But I can tell you one thing. I'm going to fight for my district and I'm going to fight for what's right. Right on. Well, Senator, thanks for talking to me. We'll catch you next week. Week five. Should be interesting. See you then.